morning everyone welcome to part 4 of lecture 3 under the same module so in this module we'll practice few example on the concept discussed in the previous lecture if you recall in the previous lecture we discussed about ecology and the environment followed by greenhouse gas and global warming and in particular this topic we discuss about the global warming potential in addition we discuss about pollutant from various fuel based power plants so in that we discuss about the various pollutant range from particulate matter carbon dioxide carbon monoxide nox sox and other pollutant so in this lecture we'll practice example in line with the concept of global warming potential as well as the pollutant emitted from various fuels and how to calculate the amount of co2 release into the environment on burning of such conventional fuel that means fossil fuels so before that we'll just recap our discussion on the global warming potential global warming potential so each gas has a specific global warming potential which allows comparison of amount of energy the emission of absorb over a given time period so basically here each gas has a specific global warming potential which allows the comparisons of amount of energy the emissions of 1 ton of gas will absorb over a given time period and usually we consider 100 year average time and the comparison is with respect to the emission of one turn of co2 so this comparison is based on emissions of one turn of co2 in the atmosphere because this co2 has a very long residence time in the atmosphere and its emission cause increase in the atmospheric concentration of CO2 that will almost uh, last for say uh, thousands of years. For example, if you remember in the previous lecture we discussed about the global warming potential. If you remember the methane's average atmospheric residence time is about decade and if you see its capacity to absorb energy is substantially more than CO2 and that gives its global warming potential of 28. So, the global warming potential of the methane is 28. Similarly, if you remember 
the global warming potential of nitrous oxide is 265 times that of CO2 and the average residence time is 1.5 time of century that is close to 100 years. So, that means for a given amount of mass they hold substantially more heat than does CO2 because their global warming potential is relatively high. And for that reason, the global warming potential are estimated relative to carbon dioxide because in general we try to measure the impact of these various pollutant that is greenhouse gases on the environment in terms of its carbon dioxide equivalent or sometimes as carbon equivalent because carbon dioxide equivalency is one way to estimate how much CO2 would be needed for say single gas that is for example, like methane, nitrous oxide and others or mixtures of emissions to have same global warming potential and it measured over definite period of time that is more often hundred years and this CO2 equivalents are often measure in terms of million metric tons of carbon dioxide equivalent. So, if you recall our discussion, so these are the points which we discussed in the previous lecture. So, in this lecture we will practice few example on the similar concept. So, let us try to solve uh, first example. So, in this example it is mentioned that a chemical industry it produces 5 teragram of nitrous oxide per day. So, with this value we have to just calculate the amount of pollution which is added in the atmosphere per day in terms of carbon equivalent. So, to solve this example first we need to calculate the value in terms of 
carbon dioxide equivalent and further you can convert that value into carbon carbon equivalent so let us begin with this example so the global warming potential that is we also nomenclature it as GWP of nitrous oxide is 265 and this value we have obtained from one of the table from previous lecture. The daily pollution of nitrous oxide is given as 5 teragram. So, now if you just try to see the daily pollution in terms of carbon dioxide equivalent, daily pollution in the daily pollution in terms of carbon dioxide equivalent in that case we have to simply multiply this 5 into 265 because if you remember the global warming potential of CO2 is 1 and here the global warming potential of the nitrous oxide is given as 265 that means we have obtained this value from the table uh, from the previous lecture. So, now if you have to calculate this daily pollution in terms of carbon dioxide equivalent, so there you can simply multiply this value of pollution of nitrous oxide to its global warming potential, then we will get the value in the form of 1325 teragram and if you convert this, it will comes out to be around like 1325 million tons of CO2. As we have been asked to calculate the carbon equivalent value, so here we have to just go for the simple conversion because as we know the molar mass of CO2 is 44 whereas the molar mass of carbon is 12. So now if you have to calculate the pollution. in terms of carbon equivalent then since this value is for the carbon dioxide equivalent if you have to convert it into carbon equivalent then you have to just simply use the molar mass of carbon and the molar mass of carbohydrate the ratio of these two into the daily pollution in terms of carbon dioxide equivalent will result into a value of 361.36 this is million tons carbon equivalent. So, this is very easy to solve uh, this example once we know the global warming potential of a specific gas. So, in the similar line we can also calculate the carbon dioxide equivalent for other gases as well for example, for methane, ozone and other gases. Similarly, in the previous lecture we discussed about pollutant from various fuel based power plant. In that we discuss about the different pollutants which get released into the atmosphere on burning of such fuels in the power plant and those pollutants are mainly particulate matter, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, NOx, SOx and other gases. So, this particular example is in line with the 
concept of the polluted which get released into the atmosphere on burning of the specific fuel in the power plant. So, in this example we need to determine the amount of CO2 produced on burning of 1 kg of brown coal and also the amount of carbon added in the atmosphere. So, we need to calculate the CO2 produced on burning of this fuel and also the amount of carbon which is added in the atmosphere on burning of this specific fuel and the heating value of this fuel is given as 16 mega joule per kg. So, let us try to solve this example. The heating value of brown coal is given as 16 mega joule per kg. So, which indicates the heat available from burning of one kg of brown coal which is equal to 16 mega joule because the heating value of this brown coal is 16 mega joule per kg so heat released on burning of say 1 kg of brown coal is equivalent to 16 mega joule and the co2 produced on burning of brown coal is 101000 gram per gigajoule and this value also we have obtained from previous lecture. So, if you recall in the lecture we discuss about the pollutant from various fuel based power plant and there we have listed various fuels and the CO2 produced from those particular fuel. So, this value is obtained from that specific table from the previous lecture and if you convert this value it will be 0 0.101 kilogram per mega joule. That means, it indicates to obtain 1 mega joule of energy from brown coal 0 0.101 kg of CO2 is produced that is the meaning here that means to obtain 1 mega joule of energy from brown coal it produces 0 0.101 kilogram of CO2. Now, therefore, as we know 1 kg of brown coal it produces heat equivalent to 16 mega joule. So, therefore, 16 mega joule of energy from brown coal produces Sixteen into Q 
kilogram per megajoule and this value is in so once it cancels out so it gives the answer in the form of 1.616 kilogram of carbon dioxide so 16 megajoule of energy from brown coal it produces around 1.616 kilogram of carbon dioxide that means burning of One kg of brown coal adds one point six one six kilogram of CO two in the atmosphere. now suppose now we need to calculate the amount of carbon added in the atmosphere carbon added in the which is equal to because we know the carbon dioxide produced is 1.616 kg so once you multiply this value by again the molar mass of carbon by molar mass of carbon dioxide so this gives the value in terms of carbon added in the atmosphere and which comes out to be around 1 kg of carbon so this is basically the example which gives us insight on the amount of carbon dioxide which gets released into the atmosphere on burning say 1 kg of brown coal so in the similar line we can also solve the example for the other fuels say for example the hard coal the oil and the gas so now let us solve one more example which is on the similar line where we need to calculate the amount of carbon dioxide and carbon added in the atmosphere while producing 1 kilowatt hour electricity and again the fuel used here is brown coal in thermal power plant and the efficiency of this plant that is turbine plus generator efficiency is given as 25% so now based on this given data we need to calculate the amount of co2 and the carbon added in the atmosphere while producing this much amount of the electricity so this example is basically in line with the previous example from where we'll be using some of the data to solve this example as well so here if you see the one unit of electricity output is equal to 1 kilowatt hour and once we convert this value into megajoule it comes out to be 3.6 megajoule and the efficiency of the plant 
is given as 25 percent. So, now to produce this 1 kilowatt hour of electricity, the required input of energy to the thermal power plant, we need to calculate. Therefore, to produce one kilowatt hour of electricity the required input energy because here the input energy is nothing but in the form of brown coal to the thermal plant is 25. So, here it will be 3.6 divided by the efficiency of the plant which is 0.25 and we will get the value in the form of 14.4 mega joule. So, that means to produce 1 kilowatt hour of electricity, the required input energy to the thermal power plant is 14.4 mega joule. So, that means the 14.4 mega joule of energy is getting converted into close to 3.6 mega joule which is equivalent to 1 kilowatt hour of electricity. Now, the heat available from burning of one kg of brown coal is 16 mega joule. This is basically the heating value of the brown coal that is 16 mega joule per kg. So, now therefore, the amount of brown coal which is required to produce 14.4 mega joule of energy. So, here simply we can divide by this heating value of the brown coal and the value comes out to be around point 9 kg. So, basically to produce 14.4 mega joule of energy, the amount of the brown coal required is 0.9 kg. So, once we know the amount of the brown coal which is required to produce 1 kilowatt hour of electricity, then we can easily calculate the amount of CO2 added in the atmosphere while producing 1 kilowatt hour of electricity which is 0.9 into 1.616 and this value we have obtained from the previous example. So, after multiplying these two values we will get the final answer in the form of 1.45 kg and similarly from 
this value we can calculate the amount of carbon added in the atmosphere. So, from this obtained value of CO2 we can easily calculate the amount of carbon added in the atmosphere which is equal to 1.45 kg into molar mass of again carbon divided by the molar mass of carbon dioxide. So, we will get the value in the form of 0 0.3966 kilogram. So, this is basically the value which indicates the amount of carbon added in the atmosphere on burning of around 0 0.9 kg of brown coal which eventually produces 1 kilowatt hour of the electricity. So, likewise we can also solve the example for the other fuel as well. The assignment will also follow the similar example where you will be asked to calculate the carbon dioxide which is added in the atmosphere on burning of the specific fuel as I mentioned because if you recollect our discussion. So, in the previous lecture we will discuss about the different fuels and their harmful effects on the environment. So, with this uh, we will end our lecture here. So, in the next lecture we will discuss about concept of solid and the liquid fuels, basic understanding of various properties of different fuels. So, mainly we will start with the solid fuels. So, in that we will discuss about the heating value of fuel, ultimate analysis and proximate analysis. Regarding this lecture, if you have any doubt, feel free to contact me at vbgood at the rate iitg.ac.in. Thank you. Thank you.